In today's video, let us discuss about the operation and working of a power contactor. A contactor is an electromagnetic switch which is used in making or breaking an electrical power circuit. The word electromagnetic switch is a very important term in this definition. In simple terms, a contactor will either make or break make or break a power circuit with the help of a electromagnet. Basically, a contactor is used in every motor starter circuit and in all complex automated industrial equipment. So, it is very important to understand the operation and working principle of an contactor. Now, if you remember the definition of a contactor, it says it's an electromagnetic switch. What do you think? Do a contactor have an electromagnet inside it? The answer to this question is yes. A contactor does have an electromagnet inside it. Now let's see how an electromagnet inside a contactor looks like. Now assume this is a coil inside the contactor. The coil has two terminals that is terminal number one and terminal number two. If we connect a supply to these terminals, voltage starts flowing and as this coil forms a closed loop, now current starts flowing in this coil. When current starts flowing in this coil, this coil creates flux and this coil when is wound and an iron core, this is an iron core and when this coil is wound and an iron core, this iron core acts as an electromagnet. Now let me quickly draw the single line diagram and explain the working of an contactor. In the beginning let us not make the diagram complex. So let me draw a simple diagram to make you understand. These are the supply terminals that are line terminals which are connected to a three phase supply. These are named as L1, L2 and L3 and these three terminals are connected to the load side so they are known as T1, T2 and T3. These are the fixed contacts and these are the movable contacts. So a connecting rod is connected to all the three moving contacts and it is finally connected to a plunger. From the plunger we have our electromagnet that is we have our coil and from the coil it is connected to a spring and one side of the spring is fixed. So these terminals are the A1, A2 terminals of the coil. Now these, these contacts initially are normally open contacts. Whenever you give supply to the A1, A2 contact, as I've told you before, when current starts flowing in this coil, this will act as an electromagnet and flux is generated through this and this will pull this plunger towards itself. When this plunger is pulled towards itself, these moving contacts starts to move and attach it to the fixed contact. So the after diagram looks something like this. After you give supply, to A1, A2 contact, the plunger gets activated, that is the electromagnet pulls the plunger towards itself and the after diagram looks like this. These moving contacts will come and attach to the L1, L2, L3 fixed contact and the power from here directly flows to T1, T2, T3 terminal. So before they are normally open contacts, as soon as you give supply to A1, A2, this will pull this plunger towards itself and this normally open will, will change to normally closed terminals and you will get voltage at these three terminals. Now there is another point also whenever this plunger is coming back this spring gets compressed. Now if you stop the supply to A1, A2 contact the spring is already loaded right so it will it'll try to come back to its original position and it will push the plunger away. 
whenever the plunger is pushed away it will come to its initial stage that is after you cut off the supply to a1 a2 this will come back to its normal position now the normal position is blue okay the blue one is after the a1 a2 coil gets de-energized and the red contact is after the a1 a2 coil gets energized when it's energized it will move to this red point and when it's de-energized as in it come back to the blue point to to make it come back to the blue point that is to make it come back to the normal point we are using the spring by the help of the spring only it is coming back to its normal state whenever the supply is given to a1 a2 contact the coil gets activated and the plunger is pulled making the contacts close after the coil gets de-energized the spring pushes the contacts away i hope you have understand the working of a contactor till now so let us now draw the actual internal diagram of a contactor this is an easy diagram to make you guys understand the concept now let us quickly draw the actual diagram this is the actual internal diagram of a contactor these are the actual terminals of a contactor see this these points these terminal points are the boxes over here and inside this you have this fixed contact and the movable contact these are fixed contacts and these are movable contacts so as explained before movable contacts are connected with a connecting rod to a plunger this is a movable plunger okay this is a movable plunger and this is the spring and this is a fixed fixed iron core this is a fixed iron core and these windings these windings are coil contacts that is this is a1 and a2 of a coil so you are supplying power to this coil whenever you supply voltage to this coil current start flowing current starts flowing in this coil from this end to in this end and when current starts flowing in this coil this coil produces flux when this flux links with this iron core this iron core start acting as an electromagnet whenever this iron core act as an electromagnet it pulls this plunger down when this plunger is pulled down this spring get compressed and these contact attach the moving contacts get attached to the fixed contacts when the moving contacts are getting attached to the fixed contact this end you will be having a bus bar r y b of a bus bar and this r y b of a bus bar are connected this side so the voltage from r y b bus bar will start flowing this way to the terminals of the motor and your motor will receive power this is the working of an contactor this is how the contactor looks okay these are the l1 l2 l3 terminals these are connected to the bus bars and these are t1 t2 t3 terminals you can see here right it's t1 t2 t3 terminals these are connected to the motor so t1 t2 t3 are connected to the load and l1 l2 l3 are connected to the line so these are line terminals and these are load terminals okay and the upper point as you can see we have other points also these other points are no nc contact they are they are similar to these contact we have other two boxes like same like these are the power contacts same like power contacts you have other two boxes you have other two boxes and these these are nonc contacts these are these auxiliary contacts so if we can draw here i'll explain you over here also see these are the power contacts power contact i'm just adding one contact because there's no place and i have just now add 
and other normally open contact and this is auxiliary contact this is this auxiliary contact is also connected with the plunger and whenever this gets activated whenever a1 a2 gets supplied this will get pulled back and the position of this also gets changed so whenever you receive power this auxiliary contact changes from nvo to nc you basically have one normally open contact and one normally closed contact and you observe carefully this contact is your a1 a2 a1 a2 contact this is the coil contact that is you provide supply to the coil from here unless until you provide supply to this coil an electromagnet is not created here and this plunger won't move down hence your contactor does not work so a1 a2 the coil is the heart of an contactor if the coil doesn't work the contactor is of no use after you cut off the supply to a1 a2 this will again as it is an electromagnet it again loses its magnetism because the spring is already loaded this spring is compressed right so it stores some kinetic energy inside this the spring stores some kinetic energy inside it it releases the energy and the spring get back to its normal state this pushes this contacts up and this movable contact again gets detached from the from the fixed contact and you are back to normal there is no flow of current the current will stop at these points because these are open circuited so hence in this way you can turn on and off the motor by using a1 a2 contacts that's all for today's video i hope you understand please do like share subscribe this video this is sandeep shakri signing off